We want to take a moment now to focus on the debt ceiling. The debt ceiling, otherwise known as the debt limit, is defined by the U.S. Treasury as, quote, the total amount of money that the U.S. government is authorized to borrow to meet its legal existing to meet its existing legal obligations. This includes Social Security and Medicare benefits, military salaries, interest on the national debt, tax refunds and other payments. If the government does not have the funds to make Make those payments, the U.S. government would technically be in default. The world financial system uh, effectively revolves around the U.S. dollar. And so any hint of default on the U.S. Treasury obligations um, really calls into question the ability of the dollar to continue to function that way. That was Professor Amy D. Duck, a professor of e economics at Mary Baldwin University. More from her in just a moment. According to the Treasury Department, since 1960, Congress has acted 78 separate times to permanently raise, temporarily extend, or revise the definition of the debt ceiling, 29 times under a Democratic president and 49 times under a Republican president. On January 19th, the U.S. hit its debt ceiling. Unfortunately, the U.S. has, fortunately rather, the U.S. has not defaulted on its debt because of the Treasury Department. In a letter to the congressional leader sent out on January 19th, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen informed Congress of, quote, extraordinary measures the Treasury Department began using to avoid the U.S. defaulting on its debt. These measures included suspending certain investments into funds with the understanding that once the debt ceiling is either raised or suspended, the funds will be paid into to catch up on missed payments as required by law. On January 24th, Yellen sent a similar letter notifying Congress of additional similar measures that had been taken starting the day before. Yellen ended both letters with this phrase, quote, I respectfully urge Congress to act promptly to protect the full faith and credit of the United States. We reached out to Professor Amy Duck, a professor of economics at Mary Baldwin University, in hopes of learning more about the debt ceiling and why Americans should keep a close eye on it. WHSV's Ethan Estrom breaks it down for us. He's live in the studio tonight. Ethan. Yeah, Chelsea and Kayla, Congress has a history of fighting over the debt ceiling. On August 8, 2011, U.S. and global markets crashed after the S&P credit rating of the United States' debt was downgraded from AAA to AA+. By market close, the Dow Jones Industrial Average had dropped over 600 points all in just one day. Many top economists attribute this credit rating down, downgrade to the debate that was going on at the time over raising the debt ceiling. Professor Dedek tells me it's difficult to compare our current situation with the one we were faced with in 2011. So I think from an economic standpoint, it's, it's hard to compare the two periods. Uh, you know, the, 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 the risk of default was certainly very high given our unstable economy in 2011. Um, I think that the economic issues are different in 2023. Does that make it an easier time for us or a worse time for us? That I'm not certain. It's a different time for us. Despite the differences between now and 2011, Professor Amy Deduck says if the U.S. defaulted on its debt, there are some predictable immediate impacts to consumers. I, I think that the in, rate, increase in interest rates would be the, the first thing that would impact people immediately. So that hits your credit cards, that hits any other borrowing that you might do, anything with an adjustable interest rate. Professor Deduck says beyond the immediate impacts, a so-called multiplier effect could lead to an economic snowball. And any small businesses that are affected by an increase in interest rates may then themselves have to lay off workers. And so you start seeing that then reducing ability of families to spend, that reduction in spending then affects other small businesses. Congressman Ben Klein, who has represented the Shenandoah Valley since 2019, has voted against raising the debt ceiling several times since entering office and has yet to vote for raising the debt ceiling. We reached out to him to better understand the reasoning behind several no votes. Well, uh, families here in Harrisonburg know that uh, you can't just keep raising the limit on your credit card uh, and keep on spending beyond your means. Eventually, you have to change your spending habits to be able to uh, pay the bills. Now, when we asked Congressman Klein a few weeks ago if he was confident that an agreement would be reached prior to the federal government defaulting on its debt, he said, quote, we will not allow the full faith and credit of this country to be compromised. We will make sure that the debt limit gets authorized, but we want to make sure that it is accompanied by some long-term reforms. Working hard for you, Ethan Estrom, WHSV.
And Ethan, while you were speaking with Professor Deduck, she also offered some insight into the current state of the U.S. debt. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, Professor Dudek tells me that economists judge the size of the U.S. debt relative to our GDP. Now, currently, our debt is over 120% of our GDP, and our country is not alone in having such a high debt-to-GDP ratio. Professor Dudek says an important factor to consider is our country's ability to repay our debt. Now, this hasn't been too much of an issue in the past since interest rates have remained relatively low, but with the Federal Reserve raising interest rates several times in the past several months, many economists have growing concerns on the interest rate hikes impacts on our ability to repay our national debt. Chelsea and Kayla. Ethan, thank you. Now, along with Ben Klein, many other Republican representatives have continuously voted against raising the debt ceiling and are saying they will not raise the debt ceiling until Democrats sit down to negotiate budget reform. Our Washington News Bureau reporter Molly Martinez heard from congressional leaders who spent who spend today blaming each other's parties for wasting crucial time. Lawmakers are running out of time to come up with a solution for our country's $31 trillion in national debt, and neither party seems willing to compromise. Democrats are angling to raise the debt ceiling, while Republicans say deep spending cuts are the answer. I think America is too important to play games with. Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy blamed the president Friday for our financial woes that have us careening towards a fiscal cliff. We've watched what has happened when the Democrats took the majority, where they spent $5.9 trillion more dollars. We warned them that that would create inflation. We watched inflation rise and all of America to be painfully hurt by that. On the other side of the Capitol, House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries warned of the consequences of inaction. A default on our debt, or even threatening to default, is going to cost the American people, individually and as families, in some cases, tens of thousands of dollars. Economists warn that if we do default on our national debt, it could mean interest rate hikes, job losses, and a potential recession. According to the Congressional Budget Office, if no action is taken, a default is expected this summer. Although both leaders signaled that they are willing to negotiate. In Washington, I'm Molly Martinez.